I'm now going to invite um, Ian Saunders, Deputy Left Lieutenant, to um, deliver the welcome. Uh, please, please sit down. Not sure I've ever delivered a welcome before, but we'll have a go. Uh, Lord Lieutenant, ladies and gentlemen, uh, on behalf of Mrs. Anna Turner, the Lord Lieutenant, Her Majesty's Lord Lieutenant of Shropshire, uh, the directors of the Emergency Services Day and church wardens of St. Chad's, may I bid you welcome. My name is Ian Soares, and I have been helping to put this all together. Now, although it is a simple, yet solemn, honorable ceremony, a few words to help. And as an ex-soldier, you'll understand why I'm going to explain this in a little detail. The center of attention for today will be the raising of the Emergency Services Day flag, which will appear at the top of the flagpole in due course. Raised by the latest in technology in the form of two of West Mercia's finest. On the second fanfare that you hear, which will be sounded by buglers of the Bugle Association of the Light Division and the Rifles, the flag will be raised in a stately fashion. And at this point, I would ask you to stand. Uh, there's no requirement to make any other gesture. Once the flag is secure, the buglers will then sound the last post, with which I'm sure you're all familiar. Those in uniform, I would ask to salute if you're wearing your hats. Gentlemen uh, who are not in uniform who are wearing hats would please remove their hats. There then follows a two minute silence, after which Ravalli will be sounded and you may resume your seats. I hope that's clear, but don't worry, follow what your neighbor does. I'll now hand you back to Keith Fraser. Thank you very much. I'd now like to invite the founder and chief executive of 999 Day, Mr. Tom Scholes-Fogg. Hi. Uh, so, as Keith said, I'm Tom Scholes Fogg. I'm the founder and chief executive of Emergency Services Day. And I thought it would be very useful to tell you how 909 Day came about. So, in 2001, my grandfather was just about to retire from Greater Manchester Police after 30 odd years' service. Um, one of his officers, a young policewoman, was murdered in the line of duty, aged just 29. The officers at Oldham Police Station in Manchester planted a tree in P.C. Allison and Armitage's memory. My grandfather took me to the tree, turned to me and said, in this country, we don't look after emergency services. And those are words that have always stuck in my mind. Several years later, with those words still in my mind, I decided to research ways the United Kingdom honored our NHS and emergency services. I was astonished to find that whilst we had a really successful Armed Forces Day, we didn't have an emergency services day. I put together the plan and submitted it to Downing Street and then onto the palace. And in the second year, we secured the support of Her Majesty the Queen, the Prince of Wales and Duke of Cambridge. 999 Day has a couple of aims. It's aimed at using it to encourage the public to engage with the emergency services, promoting efficiency, to promote the many great 909 charities, including the air ambulance, which is here. And I was saying to a couple of people earlier on, people don't quite realize that air ambulances are completely charitable funded. So we've got 2 million people who work and volunteer across our NHS and emergency services. We owe each and every one of them a huge debt of gratitude. We all know that when we need help, it's there. Even me as a police officer, I know that if I need help, it's there just by dialing 999 or, or pressing for urgent assistance. So we're here today to honor those who've served. The 909 day celebrations include His Royal Highness, the Duke of Cambridge, attending a fire station in South London. And as a Met officer myself, I was even more determined not to be in London and to come out, and which is why I'm here in Shropshire. 
And in a couple of years' time, England is actually next due to host the main national event. So you never know, the Midlands or Shropshire might be a good candidate for that event. Um, I don't think there's any other points, and uh, I, I am told that I often waffle on a bit, so I'm going to wrap it up there and, and hand over to the Archdeacon. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody, and can I say what a privilege it is to be part of this event this morning. This prayer was written by Tom, who has just spoken to us, uh, and Bishop Martin Jarrett, and it's a prayer of thanksgiving for this 999 day. Lord God, we thank you for the selfless men and women of the emergency services. We thank you for all the resources you provide for their tasks, and we thank you for the animals trained to work alongside them. We rejoice in all who work for peace and the saving of lives in danger. We pray for those who serve in the emergency services, that you protect those whose service is our protection. May they ever receive your strength in the performance of their duty. We hold up to you those who have served in past years. We recall those who have paid the ultimate price in their task of preserving life and of upholding law and order. May all who serve or have served within the emergency services be embraced within your love, both now and forever. Grant that our nation may ever continue to show its gratitude toward those who serve within its emergency services and never take for granted the precious work they undertake. We ask you, Lord, graciously to hear us. Amen. Thank you. I'd now like to invite the Lord Lieutenant to um, deliver an address. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a real pleasure to be here, and what a privilege to be hosting such an occasion. My thanks to everyone that has made it possible. I want the emergency services in this county to know our appreciation, to make sure that they don't go unnoticed. And of course, I'm afraid it doesn't go unnoticed that we've got two ambulance stations being closed, and I'm deeply sorry for that. But today, I'm so glad to be highlighting this extraordinarily efficient service that we have, that we take for granted far too often. And there are so many volunteers and career positions within the emergency services. For me personally, the emergency services means confidence, security, help, safety, calm, maybe the difference between life and death. So we really need to thank you, the emergency services, for everything you do. We've so many that come from the special constabulary and the police, the ambulance, the National Health Service, community responders, volunteer firefighters, full-time firefighters, the emergency medical teams, which include paramedics, the air ambulance, search and rescue, and so the list goes on. I know that 
horrible experience that we probably have all had at some stage that makes you feel hollow in your stomach and hideously nervous when something happens. But the relief knowing that we have this proficient service at our fingertips to dial 999, this is woven into the high standard of care that we've learned to expect in modern day. The total professional command. It gives us confidence and reassurance. The fear, panic, injuries, damage is minimized. To me, the emergency services are the backbone of our nation's defense for any number of disastrous offenses, incidents. My thanks to everyone for coming today and to the emergency services for everything they do. Thank you very much, Lord Lieutenant. I'd now like to invite the High Sheriff to deliver an address. Thank you. About a month ago, I witnessed with a mixture of horror and disbelief as a young woman set herself ablaze. It was in a public place, late morning, with several witnesses. Somebody called 999 immediately. Police, fire and ambulance services were at the scene within moments. The air ambulance was scrambled. Superb professionals whose sole thought was to save the life of this poor young woman. What, cri what crisis led her in her twenties to this moment of despair? The brave emergency responders did not know, nor did they inquire. Their one thought was her welfare. Theirs, it, Theirs is the ultimate expression of a decent society where strangers help one another, sometimes without thought to their own welfare. This is civilization. Witness a fight down a dark alley, and as a civilian, you can try to break it up or walk swiftly away. You have a choice. Put on a police uniform and you have no choice. Witness trouble and you're immediately involved. As a civilian, you can walk from a burning fire. As a firefighter, you must hurry towards it. As a civilian, you can look away from a bloodied driver screaming in pain in the wreckage of a car crash. As ambulance crews get up closer, working at speed with soothing words and actions. Since records began in 1900, more than 4,000 police officers Men and women of all ages have lost their lives in Britain, trying to make it safer for us all, and in attempt making the ultimate sacrifice. More than 20,000 police officers are assaulted every year, and that does not include attacks that officers don't report, brushing them aside as part of their job. Statistics show if you put on a police uniform, you are 12 times more likely to be assaulted than the rest of us. The fire service put themselves at risk on a daily basis, but thankfully, no firefighters have died in Shropshire in this millennium, but more than 20 have died nationally. For ambulance crews, as with police and firefighters, there's the ever-present danger of road accidents as they answer the blue light call. But there's an ugly trend in recent years, has seen a number of, wit of sickening attacks on ambulance crews, whether in person or by pelting their vehicles with missiles. More than 3,500 ambulance staff were physically assaulted in 2017 to 2018. That was a rise of 30% on the previous year. So we're here today to hail a group of quite extraordinary people, the men and women who put on uniform of the police, fire, rescue and ambulance services. As High Sheriff, Part of my role is to support their efforts in whatever way I can, to shine a light on their selfless service. It's my honour and privilege to do so, and to say humbly from deep within, thank you.
Thank you very much, High Sheriff. Now, before the time that we're all here for, which will be a real focus of, um, of today and why we're here in relation to this ceremony, we're going to have um, a short moment of contemplation and thanks. And it, I'd like you to all get to know each other quite briefly, those people who are sat next to each other. So we have a couple of minutes just to say thank you to each other here and introduce yourselves to the people who are sat next to you because you are here because you want to say thank you to the 999 services and also the NHS. So we've got just a couple of minutes for you just to say hello and introduce yourselves to the, pers the people next to you and also the people behind you. We thought that would be quite, quite fitting because we're saying thank you to others, but I think we need to thank you as well and you need to thank those next to you for being here. So it'll be a couple of minutes just to do that.
Okay, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really pleased that you've all taken the time now to get to know each other. It looks like some real strong friendships are being made here today, so that's excellent. I'm going to hand over this part of the um, ceremony now to um, the Deputy Lieutenant in relation to this part as we kind of do the countdown to the um, critical part of today.
Thank you very much, everybody. Please be seated. I'd now like to invite Chief Superintendent Moxley to deliver an address. Good morning, everybody. Two minutes, Ian, two minutes to condense 18 months of self-sacrifice, worry and exposure to what was at times a largely unknown threat it does not seem long enough, but I will try and do my best. And we forget so easily the concern, the confusion, the lack of PPE and the sheer enormity of the task that started to become apparent to all of us in February 2020. My staff was still having to engage at close quarters, make arrests and get face to face with offenders who began to adopt a pretty disgusting tactic at spitting at us and paramedics whilst being arrested, a trend that increased by some 50% during COVID. Whilst our demand shifted hugely from criminality to the ever-changing challenges of COVID legislation and enforcement, our paramedic colleagues, our fire colleagues, were encountering staggering levels of demand and were facing the threat head on, as were all our colleagues within the health and social care settings, all at a time when most of us were hunkering down in our safe homes getting frustrated that we couldn't get a shopping delivery slot and shouting, you're on mute, to fellow colleagues on Zoom. It's that sheer dedication of our collective frontline colleagues that I would like to pay tribute to. Their unwavering, no-nonsense acceptance of the tasks that we collectively demanded of them during that pandemic. The clear personal risks to their own health and that of their wider families that they so resolutely dealt with and the clear sense of duty that all our staff demonstrated shows what great, great people we all employ to do these toughest of jobs. I am clear that without the heroic efforts of our emergency services and our NHS colleagues, this county and many, many more families within it would have been profoundly impacted by what we've all been through. I'm therefore very grateful to the Lord Lieutenant, Shropshire's High Sheriff, for inviting me here today to represent the men and women who work within West Mercia Police. This emergency services event is such an important occasion to enable me to celebrate, pay tribute and just simply thank all of my officers and staff and all of the emergency services and NHS frontline workers who have performed so exceptionally over the last 18 months. We all, I think, remain extremely grateful. Thank you. I'd now like to invite the Chief Fire Officer for Shropshire to deliver an address. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first, everyone, I'd like to say a huge thanks to Tom and the team at the 999 uh, camp for putting this on. It's a, it's a massive honour for us in the emergency services to, to be able to be here and to be part of it. So thank you very much for that. The day for me is really two, in two parts. Uh, the first, I think it's, it's important for us to have a time to remember those who have lost their lives in the line of duty. And I, and I think we can perhaps cast our recent history back to the year 2000, uh, 20 years, uh, 20 years since the terrible events uh, that took place in New York, uh, and the world changed since then, and we all changed with them. 343 firefighters died in those events, and I think that also changed the way people thought about firefighters and firefighters thought about themselves, uh, which was important to us. Pleasing to the, 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 the levels in the UK are, are lower, but of course, firefighters and other emergency service workers do put themselves in the line of harm every day. So it's appropriate that we should remember that and, and think and put our thoughts with the families and loved ones who have lost. But secondly, I think today should be uh, almost one of celebration because with those terrible events brought a refocusing. They brought new endeavours to bring together all the emergency services to make sure that we act as one. And since that time, we have local resilience forums that have been brought about. 
Uh, and we've had them well exercised over the last year, as, as Paul has just <laughs> indicated. Uh, but through those local resilience forums, all the Category 1 responders, as we call them, which sounds like jargon, but really they're, they're the people that you think of calling when you're when in a difficult situation. And that includes the local authorities as well, so don't forget them. All of those come together to deal with things. So we've, we've exercised that and we've practiced it and we've done it for real over the last two years incredibly effectively. Also, that's in response. In prevention, we work harder than ever before. We have our teams working in preventative groups trying to get in and understand the lives of the most vulnerable and do what we can together to help them. And that's emergency services, the NHS, the social services, everyone working as one. And finally, in enforcement and education, we've learned so much about working together more effectively in enforcement and education. And of course, that's not the heavy hand of the law, that's the helping hand that keeps our society together. So as a group, the emergency services, the NHS, the local authorities, we are better prepared and better exercised than ever before. So I'm thankful that as a society, I think we're in safe hands. Thank you. Thank you. I've got the unenviable task of um, kind of wrapping all of this up and, and bringing it all together. So I'd want to kind of start off with some thank yous and then some personal reflections and then obviously I'll introduce the um, next, next part to um, close. Firstly, I'd like to um, thank the Lord Lieutenant and the High Sheriff for helping to act as a catalyst to um, bring us all together. So I really do thank you for um, what you've done in relation to bringing this event together. Secondly, I'd like to thank everybody here. I know that the people we have here today and those that couldn't attend are extremely busy. So I thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule to come here. Also, I'd like to thank RDS Consulting who have helped to sponsor today as well, because without a partnership between the emergency services and also businesses and things like this would not happen. So we need the support of businesses, we need the support of communities for this charity, this non-profit organisation to survive and, and, do what it, and do what it does. And also I'd like to say thank you to um, the blood bikes who are here as well. We've heard a lot about the um, statutory services and we've touched on some of the um, volunteer services, but they're a symbol of um, the wide breadth of what happens when you ring or you dial 999. I said ring, that shows my age. Um, you can, you, whatever it is that you need or you want in relation to that time of need you will get when you dial those three numbers. And also the fact that we are all here today from different parts of that 999 team, because you're all part of it, shows the breadth of what is needed to support and, and provide that service to the public. On a, on a personal note, I was a police officer for 32 years, I retired just over three years ago, and being part of something like this gives me immense pride. Behind the scenes, where there's been no kind of cameras or anything like that, I've gone through some quite significant challenges in relation to it might be a violent incident that I've been part of, it might be a major incident, it might be looking at strategy and policy and dealing with some real challenges behind the scenes. And those are the things that the NHS and also Team 999 do behind the scenes, day in, day out. What makes a day like this really important is the things that are happening behind the scenes for us. It actually gives the public an opportunity to say thank you and engage with those who run towards us when we, when we need them at that time of our, our need. You think how long those two minutes felt when we were stood there in silence and contemplation. It seemed like an absolute age for me. But you think what those two minutes feel like if you are a member of the emergency services trying to get to somebody who has dialed 999 every second counts. So that's why I think those two minutes are important. It gets you to kind of stop and think 
about what's going through the minds of those that are coming, coming to help us, whether it be in a hospital or whether it be responding to a call, but also those people that need us as well and need our help at those, at those critical times. So I would like to um, end by saying thank you. I think that what's happened today in Shropshire is, you know, you've done the county proud. You've also, on behalf of the UK, might I add as well, actually shown what I think is reflective of the British public, what we see here, is that we really do want to say thank you to the NHS and Team 999. So thank you very much for your, for your support today. And I look forward to seeing what we do, and when I say we, I'm including yourselves do, in maintaining and gathering momentum about this important day where we say thank you to our 999 services. I'm going to hand over now to the capable voice of um, our Deputy Lieutenant who's going to lead us in the National Anthem. God save us, and refreshments. <laughs> Most important, please. Uh, in the parish hall, just round the back, if you go past Brian, who's been seeing you parking, and up the little lane there, there are the friends of uh, St Chad's have laid on some nourishing sustenance for those of you who missed breakfast this morning. 